fake Van Gogh painted a quilting bee. A quilting bee is a social gathering of women working together, and guess what kind of work they are doing? They're sewing quilts. Well, she sewed a quilt, and this little lady right here, that's Willa Marie. That's Faith's alter ego. And she gathered these women up and took them to all his fans to meet Mr. Vincent Van Gogh. <laughs> well, he was standing there happily among his sunflowers, because sunflowers is something he painted a lot of his prints all the time. And here he was with these eight women. Oh, they were having a time. They were shown symbolically <coughs> that, um, that they did something that nobody else ever did. The women are Madam C.J. Walker, the daughter of a former slave, who worked in the cotton field as a youngster, but transformed herself into a millionaire. I wish I could figure out how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> she manufactured and sold her products for African American women's hair. Sojourner Truth, born into slavery, best known for her extemporaneous speech, Ain't I a Woman? Ida B. Wells, known for her persuasive speaking skills, she traveled internationally speaking out against lynching in the United States. Fannie Lou Hamer, a former sharecropper turned voting rights activist and civil rights leader. Now, Fannie Lou Hamer, I don't want you to tell Faith this, but she was my favorite. I knew about her. I wrote a play about her in 1981. I don't remember it because I don't remember anything, but. <laughs> Harriet Tubman, an escaped slave, famous for her missions to rescue hundreds of slaves by way of the Underground Railroad. Rosa Parks, we've all heard of her, refuses to give up her seat on the bus in Montgomery, Alabama. A well-known civil rights activist who was the first woman whose visitation was in the Capitol Rotunda. Mary McLeod Bethune, founder of the Bethune-Cookman College. She served as an advisor to President, President Franklin D. Roosevelt. Ella Baker. Well, Ella Baker's name might not be known to many of those who were involved, many of those who were involved in the Civil Rights Movement when Martin Luther King knew her well. She worked behind the scenes and was a very powerful voice in the Civil Rights Movement. Now, I took this opportunity to tell you about some women in my life that were special, that were important, that I admired, that I loved. One of them was Mrs. Doreen Ambers, and she's dead now. She worked in the country club in Hannibal, and she said they didn't allow no blacks in there. Well, Larry Thomas wanted to come to a graduation party and all of his little white friends were very, very angry because they wouldn't let him come. And they said they weren't going to come to the party either if he couldn't come. So they let him come. And they had a ball. They didn't have any trouble. Now, she would have turned over in her grave with laughter if she had known that Larry Thomas was in the White House. And then there's Miss Lillian Hawkins Jones. And then there's Miss Angela Williams. <laughs> My apprentice, Angela, has been such a big help to me this week. You know, when I was younger, I used to be able to find a story, look at the story, and in two days, I had that story and made it my own. Now, 
I have to look at that story 50 times, <laughs> and I still may not remember it. My mind is gone. Angela doesn't believe me. She said, your mind's not gone, but I know it is. <laughs> She um, helped me with this speech. This speech I did about 10 times, and then I wrote it and read it, and I memorized it, then I changed it. <laughs> then after I changed it, I memorized it, and then I changed it again. <laughs> then I went back to the first one and found out that I hadn't memorized it at all. <laughs> I couldn't remember anything that it said. But Angela has been a real help to me. We met about um, when she was nine years old. See, I don't even know how long that was. <laughs> when she was nine years old, and um, I had a girls' acting club, and we traveled by bus, and they'd say their little poems and do their little dance, and they were so cute. Well, well, I'll let her tell you. You don't want to tell? <laughs> Hi. <laughs> she asked me to say something yesterday. <laughs> Was it last night? <laughs> yes. Because she's young, she's only 28 years old. I don't even remember when I was 28. <laughs> Well, believe it or not, I was very, very shy. I still am. She always tells a story about when she, <laughs> <laughs> she always tells a story about when um, I first signed up to uh, be in the um, Missouri Artist Arts Apprentice Program. She says I had to hide in the room just to uh, record my story. I don't think it is true. true. <laughs> it was not that bad. But um, it was I worse. Was, it was worse. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I've been telling stories for um, nine or ten years now, and um, I never imagined that I would be even just um, sit up here and in front of you all tonight. Never dreamed it, but that's what storytelling has done for me. And working with her, she's like a, a second mother to me. She is like a mother. I call her mom. Um, but I'd like to thank the Missouri Arts Program for uh, choosing me. It's changed my life, and I really appreciate it. Um, anything else? Yes. Tell them about your telling. Oh. <laughs> well, I've been telling uh, for nine years, as I told you before, um, folk tales, any kind of tales I can think of. Sometimes it's hard to stop me from talking. And that's why I'm trying to give her back the mic because I could go on and you would think, why, why is my name on the program? <laughs> but uh, I've been telling, and we've been in the schools all week. I've been telling stories. My favorite master man, which is about an African um, who um, thought he was so tough. <laughs> thought he was so tough. He thought he was the strongest man in the world. And I've just been having a great time. It was, I was getting sad just um, kind of reminiscing and uh, sitting in the classroom and watching the kids the first day. They didn't know about storytelling. What is it? Never heard of it. I don't know. And you want me to tell a story and I could just see myself in those kids. And um, it took me about, well, I had to sign up for the British program two years. <laughs> and these kids are um, getting up after three days and just telling stories. And it's, it's very magical. Storytelling is very powerful. And um, and um, just thank you for allowing me to share. <laughs> so what happened? Okay. Well, I want to tell you before you leave a little about storytelling. It is a magical thing to do. I've been storytelling now for 33 years. It's time for me to pass it on to Angela. She's going to be the next master storyteller. She is. Remember that, Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> I can't let you leave without 
teaching you my song. You know, Angela said that um, when she was nine years old that I taught her this song. I was asking if, she was hoping that I would ask somebody else to come up and I asked her to come up. She said no. <laughs> but to this day, I still teach this song because I want this song to be known worldwide. I want everybody in the world to sing this song. And one day, they will. And I'll be famous. I'll be dead, but I'll be famous. <laughs> <laughs> it's called The Three-Eyed Cat from Hannibal, Missouri. Now, Lisa, you could come up and lead this song, because I know you know this song. <laughs> And this is how it goes. Now this is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna sing it to you. And then you're gonna sing it to me. All right? What? Okay. <laughs> okay. There was a three-eyed cat that lived in Hannibal, Missouri. Could walk and talk and do most anything. He could read and he could write stay out of any fight but best of all he could even sing he had an eye on each side and one in the middle he stood on his hind legs and he played the fiddle and when he passed the lady cats he chip his hat and bow and they'd all swoon and say meow <laughs> when people heard about him they thought that it was funny, but agents came from far and near in hopes of making money. The cat said, I'm sorry, I hate to let you down. I'm keeping my fame local, Hannibal is my town. <laughs> he had an eye on each side and one in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> he stood on his hind legs and played the fiddle. Ooh, they're good. <laughs> When he passed the lady cats, he'd tip his hat and bow, and they'd all swoon and say, Yeah! Oh, you're ready. You, we can go on the road with this. <laughs> Here we go. What are the first words? I know some of you better know this by now. Okay. There was a three-eyed cat who lived in Hannibal, Missouri. Could walk and talk and do most anything. He could read and he could write, stay out of any fight. But best of all, he could even see. He had an eye on each side and one in the middle. He stood on his hind legs and and when he passed the lady cats, he tip his sack and bow, and they'd all swoon and say, Meow! This is very good, very good. <laughs> when people heard about him, they thought that it was funny. But agents came from far and near in hopes of making money. Oh, you all just get that part. <laughs> Always get that part. <laughs> the cat said, I'm sorry, I hate to let you down. I'm keeping my fame local, and I'm in my town. He had an eye on his side and one in the middle. He stood on his hind legs and he played the fiddle. And when he passed the lady cats, he tipped his hat and bowed. And they all swoon and say, meow. Very good. Now, if you forget the, wait, 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 wait. If you forget the melody, if you forget the words, go to Gladys Cogswell on YouTube. <laughs> and I will sing it for you. <laughs> I want to thank you all for coming and thank you for listening to me, the little I have to say. 
I want to want you to think about the paintings when you go upstairs. It's a wonderful exhibit. I know it took a lot of hard work and patience and commitment and everything to get this extraordinary exhibit together for us. I want to thank Lisa Higgins and Debbie Bailey and Carol Geisler and Mary Pixley. They've all been so wonderful to me. And I don't know what more I could ask for. I wouldn't ask for this much. <laughs> But um, I hope you all will enjoy yourselves this evening. And thank you again for coming out for me.